All right. Okay. Welcome to uh, to another video from Six Patterns. Uh, my name is Max. I'm Kevin. And today we're going to talk about another one of the basic six patterns. Great. So here we have our biopsy from scanning magnification. Again, uh, basic questions here at Six Patterns. Simple questions. Blue or pink? To me, this looks blue. And it's still got a lot of holes in it. So it's not solid blue like it might be a tumor where you'd expect more solid. This is, um, this is kind of moth-eaten blue. Yeah, right. a little bit, and and it kind of gives you the sense if you've spent any time at higher power with lung biopsies, it gives you the sense that you still have a bunch of airways that are open down there. Right. But you have some vague areas of, for lack of a better word, consolidation right. here. Within, micronodules. Yeah, micronodules. And where are those? They look to be, one, at least there is next to a uh, bronchiole, and there's some arteries yeah, right in there. So there's a bronchiole that has a spin-off of blue around it right there. And it's not cuffing the arteries, you notice that? It, it's nodularity around the airway of blue cells. And blue cells are typically? Inflammatory cells, lymphocytes, and plasma cells. Right. So we can, now that we, I think we're safely in what pattern? This is pattern three. Cellular infiltrates. Cellular infiltrates. So once we safely get into the cellular infiltrates pattern, then we can go to higher power and see exactly what kind of cells these might be that are expanding the interstitium. And like I said, most often cellular infiltrate patterns, we're dealing with lymphocytes and we're dealing with plasma cells. And I think probably in this case, we have a combination, which right. is this, what you would expect to see. And the easiest way to tell that is to look for little round blue cells. Those are the real lymphocytes. And then every other cell that, ha that has a cuff around it, that you can't really see the cytoplasm, but if there's a cuff, it's probably a plasma cell or a plasma cytoid lymph. So when, the, when they're pure lymphocytes, they gather close together. Right. When they're plasma cytoid, there's more spread apart, as you see this here. This guy right here. Right, exactly. So dominant plasma cells, maybe, and macrophages? Yeah, lymphoplasmacytic yeah. infiltrate, expanding yeah. the interstitium. Boy, it looks a lot like they say in the textbooks, cellular nonspecific interstitial pneumonia to me. NSIP. Cellular NSIP. You know, they say that's a starting point and never an ending point. That's right. Like many diagnoses in pulmonary pathology, it's not really a diagnosis. It's a description of a pattern, which in fact, the cellular infiltrates overall pattern is basically a... NSIP. A cellular NSIP, exactly. So we even say for pattern three that the prototype is either NSIP or hypersensitivity. Because so, what was the original name for hypersensitivity pneumonitis? Extrinsic allergic alveolitis. That last word. Al alveolitis. alveolitis. Right? Yep. And if, if you were going to, going to draw a picture of what an alveolitis looks like, inflammation of the alveolar walls. This is it. This would be it. This would definitely be it. So it looks to me like the places that are quote unquote consolidated here are just probably collapse. The air is out of the alveoli. It doesn't look to me like we've actually got structural uh, reconstruction of the interstitium. It just looks like there's too many lymphocytes and plasma cells, and the lung is sort of atelectatically collapsed in those areas. I agree, and maybe an accumulation of some macrophages yeah. like what you Making have it here. Look solid, yeah. And those macrophages look like they're in spaces. Maybe those are alveolar ducts. Maybe some of them are terminal airways. Um, so what do we need to look for next if we think this isn't a generic cellular NSIP? The differential would be? Connective tissue disease would be at the top of that differential diagnosis. Right. Hypersen and hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity, adverse drug reaction, yeah. or as an idiopathic disease, right. cellular nonspecific interstitial pneumonia. Right. So things that you would look for to help support a diagnosis of connective tissue disease, pleuritis, right. lymphoid follicles with germinal centers, right. neither of which we have in this class. Correct. Correct. So CTD, it still could be CTD, but nothing to really hang our hats on with this biopsy. Right. So the other thing we got to think about here is hypersensitivity, especially since the the cellular infiltrates seem to be gathering around the airways, and that's where you get an inhalation. Exactly, problem. an inhalational, a chronic inhalational etiology. Yep. Yes. So maybe we should look around the 
airways and see if we see any granulomas. Good. Right? That's where I'd start looking. If you're going to look for granulomas and hypersensitivity, they're going to be in the vicinity of the, oh my God, right there. Max, you jumped right in there and you found the I granuloma. Went, I went straight for it. That is a beautiful, small, poorly formed granuloma. Correct. Typical of hypersensitivity. Hypersensitivity pneumonitis. A few multinucleated giant cells, a few histiocytes in the background. And note where it is, right? We're not talking about giant cells in air spaces. We're talking about giant cells in the subepithelium of a bronchial. Uh, bronchial. And look at that bronchial. The in, there's inflammation in just under the epithelium and in the epithelium. So this is a true chronic bronchiolitis, exactly. which is classic for the subacute form of hypersensitivity, pneumonitis. And in the United States, the most common etiology is the presence of a domesticated bird. So when we see this pattern and we're thinking this is a pretty good hypersensitivity pneumonitis of subacute type, usually several weeks to a few months in evolution, we suggest to the clinician that they query the patient about any exposure to pet birds, whether in their own home, their daughter's home, their son's home, uh, wherever they may go every day. Exactly. They may work in an aviary and say, I don't own birds. Or they may have down pillows and down comforters and not be thinking about that possible exposure. Exactly. exactly. This is another granuloma of hypersensitivity pneumonitis. And you may say, that doesn't really look like a granuloma to me, but this is the granuloma of hypersensitivity. We're not, talk we're not looking for big sarcoidal granulomas. We're not looking for caseating granulomas of TB. We're looking for these small, poorly formed... Immune yes. granulomas. I like to think of them because in the liver, in the GI tract, almost... Other, any other solid organ that has immune disease, you'll, you'll see these poorly formed small aggregates of multinucleated giant cells, and sometimes they'll have calcific material in their cytoplasm, so-called shaman bodies. Which mean? Nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Yeah. Even though there's a, there's a picture in every textbook yeah. of a shaman body. And everyone thinks that asteroid and shaman bodies are part of sarcoid. Try to find one in a case of sarcoid, and it can actually can be quite challenging. You'll find it more commonly in any other granulomatous disease. So here we got the picture. We got a small granuloma cuffed with lymphocytes and plasma cells. We got foamy macrophages up in the upper right corner. A robust cellular interstitial infiltrate. It sounds to me like this is a classic hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Subacute hypersensitivity pneumonitis. Right. So that pretty much sums up uh, the pattern number three: yep. cellular infiltrates. Don't forget to comment and subscribe and like for important.